you know, I remember a time when stuff was simpler, including the purchase of produce. Because one time, my friend helped me buy a bag of bell peppers because I forgot to buy them for a stir fry that night. And whenever I received the package, this thing popped out of it. Now, am I seeing things? Or have GMOs already gone too far? What is going on guys, MJ2005 gonna appear and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Universal Century Kshatriya from Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. Now right out of the bat, I have to credit my friend for providing me with this kit because if it weren't for them, this review would not have been possible. So kudos to the friend who provided me with this kit but anyways let's get into the review so overall the looks itself the plastic quality looks to be a little bit on the cheap side but then again i had to give them the benefit of the doubt because this kit was released in 2009 technological limitations prevented them from giving us like a more visually appealing gloss or semi-gloss coating which is present on the kit so i cannot blame them for the plastic looking a little bit cheap the overall silhouette looks pretty accurate to the animation lineup and of course I have to point out that the color separation on this kit is absolutely phenomenal because the beam cannons over here are made up by plastic pieces, the piping, plastic pieces, the sleeves, stickers, but I can forgive them for that. But think about it, you don't get colored in beam cannons and piping in a modern kit. Like that is something that they managed to do decade ago and they don't even bother to do it on present kits and yet here we are a kit that is over a decade old can trump or even match up to some of the kits that were released nowadays as completely new molds so what the hell has Banda been doing i don't know but the kshatria is definitely a statement piece to behold in terms of engineering now i did mention the sleeves are stickers but there are also stickers for the eye and the strips on the leg thrusters while it rotates around. But the only sticker that the friend used is the eye because they did the reverse wash technique on wherever the sleeve stickers are supposed to be. And frankly, they did do a very good job on the reverse wash as a newbie to the technique. So with more polish and more experience, they could definitely produce a better product. But for a beginner, this is not too shabby. Of course, I did paint in the white strips on the side light thrusters just because they forgot about it. And comparatively, it's terrible because it's just Gundam marker. I'm just rushing this out. But anyways, overall, this kit does look mean and boasts an imposing look and the engineering is just mind-boggling to think about why did Bandai do this in the past yet not now so overall this kit is very very promising articulation wise i have to remove half of this bell pepper to throw into a stir fry just to give you guys enough clearance for the arm articulation but first of all let's take a look at the head the head itself is on a neck joint and a peg joint so the funky chicken is not possible and of course the collars and the snout of the head does collide with each other so there is not going to be much head movement to go about of course now the arms they have a swivel out joint which is all right looking they can of course rotate the arms can go out albeit very weirdly because they're jointed at the top of the, of the shoulder the arms can rotate a little bit but because of the gauntlet, they do tend to collide with the shoulder, so you cannot do a full 360 rotation. The arms themselves, they're on a double joint, so they do have a slightly more than 90 degree bend. And the wrists are on ball joints, but then again, the gauntlets are probably going to get in the way of providing you with a 360 rotation. And the waist over here is on a peg and a slight bit of a potty cap, so you can do a little bit of forward and back crunching. And of course, some rotation. Doesn't seem to be any obstruction, so you can go do a full 360. Front skirts, they can move up. Side skirts can move up. Back skirt is, as usual, a block. And the legs, they do not seem to have any unique mechanics, so all they can do is go forwards. Not really that much because of the obstructions of the armor. Go backwards, obviously not. Go to the side all the way for something this chunky. 
it's definitely good. Rotation at the hip, a double jointed knee that can only bend 90, and then the foot can go forward and back, side to side, rotate a little bit, and there's no toe movement. Now the binders over here, of course they can swivel at the base. And let me take a third quarter off to show you guys that it can of course have a hinge at the base, albeit very hard to move. You do have a double hinge over here so you can collapse the joint entirely. There is a locking mechanism over here that you can unlock just so the bell pepper over here can move at the joint at the base. They are also jointed on the bell pepper itself. Thrusters over here are on ball joints and that's basically about it. So overall the articulation of the bell pepper from hell is definitely not the best because of its design but considering how this guy fought in the anime you will not be able to pull off too many dynamic poses because this thing is not really made for dynamic poses anyways. So that's going to be all the articulation on the Chrysatria. Gimmicks and accessories. First of all, the movable mono eye. So what you want to do is to not take off the head from the horn, but more than likely you'll be doing that. And there is, as per usual, a rectangular tab on the underneath of the head if the stupid camera can focus on it. But I believe you can see it anyways. And you can use some tools or just poke your finger in there to move the mono eye which is very nice considering the limited head articulation. You can allow it to move the eye from side to side just to give you guys a menacing stare. And you just plug the head back on after you're done. Second of all, you do have the 24 funnels that are inside of the binders. Each of them are just like the cubolite, they're individual, but they do have a gigantic slit over here, so I doubt you'll be able to prop these things up anyways. So, just to prevent it myself from losing any of these, I'm going to keep them in the binders. But I could imagine how much of a hellhole it is cleaning up every single individual one of them. Next on the menu, you do have these subarms that are hidden inside of the bell peppers. So, you can unfold it. It's on a hinge on the bottom and a hinge over here and a hinge at the actual arm itself. Now you can also extend the claw that is inside it just to allow for the Gashatra to reach out without using its actual arms but unfortunately this kit does not provide the beam sabers that are supposed to be used by the sub arms so you are four beam sabers short from the anime adaptation of the Gashatra. But I can understand why they did not do that because technology was rather simple back in 2009. Speaking of beam sabers, you do get two actual physical beam sabers that the Kshatriya can use with these beams over here. I think they're SB1 beams, they're master grade beams anyway. So yeah, you can definitely just allow the Kshatriya to just hold them in the hands by just sticking them into them. Now, by the way, there's a problem with this kit. Like I feel like the right shoulder is a little bit loose. So posing could pose a little bit of a problem with the right shoulder. So here we have the Kshatriya dual wielding the beam sabers. Now, obviously the sub arms cannot use the beam sabers because the claws are way too wide for them to fit in there. So yeah, you're out of luck on that front. There's another thing that my friend forgot to put in the box is a stand adapter for the Kshatriya. So what you want to do is to basically remove this crotch plug and then plug the adapter in there just so you can prop this kit up, which it desperately needs because it is not made for the ground. So that is going to wrap it up for the accessory section for the Kshatriya. So for comparisons, it will be absolutely insulting if I did not bring in the real grade Unicorn Gundam for a comparison. Even in destroy mode, the Unicorn Gundam looks minuscule when compared to the Bell Pepper from Hell. Next up, let's bring in an average size Gundam right here. This is a painted bill, by the way. And you can see how badly dwarfed the Arc 782 Gundam is when compared to the Kshatriya. And finally, let's bring in another sleeves mobile suit that is causing me problems even now, the real great Shenanju. Head height wise, they match, but combining it with the binders over here, the Kshatriya easily just eats up the Shenanju when it comes to size. 
So that is going to wrap it up for the High Grade Kshatriya review. Now, as you can tell by my tone, I'm absolutely satisfied by this kit. Because not only does it look mean, big, and imposing, the silhouette is accurate, and it does have color separation that we can only dream to have in modern high grades. Let's say the color separated beam cannons and the piping on the arms and the legs. To top it all off, it does have all the signature mechanics of the Kasatria minus the beam sabers that are meant for the subarms use. But speaking of the subarms, that we can only dream to have in modern high grades just because we could not even have anything close to the Kasatria nowadays because Banda will not implement the subarms as thin as the ones on the Kshatriya when it comes to modern high grades. But the only downsides of this kit are the loose joints sometimes, because yeah, this kit still uses polycaps unfortunately. 2009, I can't blame them. And the only inclusion of hands being the holding hands, so you don't have any open hands for dynamic posing, or anything of that sort. So you will either have to improvise or just live without it. But overall, looking at this from a... But as a whole, this kit is definitely a 9 out of 10. Even though it is 12 years old, I will still absolutely recommend you guys to go ahead and pick up the Kshatriya if you do see it in stores or in online shops. Now let's hope with what Bandai has been doing to older kits nowadays, that we get a high-grade Kshatriya Bezavong later down the line. So that's gonna wrap it up for me. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to drop a like, comment, and also subscribe for more gunpla reviews, gunpla news, and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe to the future channels on my channel page if you haven't, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.